Hey everybody, God bless you. Fred Kropp coming from the Healing Rooms. Today I want to talk to you about the 11th commandment. What? That's right, the 11th commandment. You know what it is? Thou shalt not worry. That's right. Thou shalt not worthy. worry. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 6, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells us to not worry three times in a short few phrases. Here's what he says. This is Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore, Jesus said, I say to you, or right, here's the first one, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor what about your body, what you'll put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Then he says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, here's this, another place, he says, which of you by worrying can add one cubit or one inch to his stature or one foot? Then he says this, why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today uh, is and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Here it is the second time. Therefore, do not worry about what you're saying. What you're saying, listen, do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom or the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. What things? All the things you're worried about. Here's the third time. Therefore, Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So let's pray about this right now. Lord, speak to us about the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not worthy worry. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, what is worrying? Worrying means to, uh, the definition of it out of Webster's is to feel uneasy or troubled, distressed, you know, pressured, stressed out, right? Uh, to feel this nagging concern, to struggle, to be anxious, to fear. Uh, you feel like you're strangling uh, to be tormented, feel like you're being plagued, okay? And so it means to torment yourself with disturbing thoughts. It means spending today trying to figure out tomorrow. It means to dwell on negative or fearful thoughts about the future. Worry is the devil's attack on your mind. Now, facts about worry. Number one, worry will take up time that you can be doing something productive. Secondly, worry is negative faith, right? We're supposed to walk by faith and not by sight. And there is negative faith and worry is negative faith. We're believing for bad things to happen ahead. Number three, worry won't change anything, but faith does. I've never think, seen anything change my be me worrying about it. Number four, worry is taking things that God says he said he will take care of and making them our concern. So what we do is God says, I, and here's what Jesus said, God says he's going to, he knows about you. He knows about your situation. He's promised to take care of you. He's a good father. Why are you worrying about something that God said he would take care of? Uh, number five, uh, what you worry and think about will eventually come out of your mouth and your words direct your life, right? And number six, worry will drain you of your physical, mental energy. It'll lower your resistance to sickness and disease. A lot of people, you come into uh, sicknesses and diseases simply because as you worry, it breaks down your ability to resist disease. And then number seven, worry will cause you to be unfruitful in God's kingdom. Why? Because in Matthew chapter 13 talks about the different kinds of soil that don't produce fruit when the word of God comes into it. One is called the, so, the seed that was sown among thorns, which is called the cares of this world. So worry will stop your productivity. Now, worry is always asking questions, right? What are the questions? Well, what are we going to do? You know, how are we going to make it? What's going to happen to me? Where am I going to go? Here's a big one. What will they think? Or what if? And so worry comes in the form of questions. Now, we need to realize that who do you think wants you to worry? That's right, the devil. 
So who do you think is going to start putting questions in your mind about the future or about your situation? It's going to be the devil. And the Bible says that he's a liar from the beginning. So how do we overcome worry? Here's one. That, all you need is this one. And this will really help you. This really helped me. Realize that do not worry is a command, not a suggestion. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, first words, do not worry about anything. What if, you know, so don't commit adultery, you know, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't worry. And so if I take it as a command, then when worry starts to come, I have to say, you know what, I can't worry because it's a command. I'm not supposed to worry. <clears throat> Number two, ask yourself the question, what am I worrying about? Why am I worrying uh, am I worrying about whether I'm going to have clothes tomorrow? What, what am I going to? I'm worried about whether we're going to have our job next year, or what about the the economy? What am I worrying about? Ask yourself the question: uh, What? Why am I worrying right now? And sometimes that'll help you to get free from it. Another thing, number three, is look at the birds and the flowers. So here Jesus says, if He takes care of the birds and the flowers, how much more is He going to take care of you? Because you're of great much greater value than the birds or the flowers. So, hey, go outside. Take a look at the birds. I have birds around my house right now. I have a little nest uh, with a hummingbird that's laid some eggs. And, you know, I'm looking up there, and that hummingbird just doesn't seem to be all worried about what's going to happen next. And so look at the birds and flowers. Number four, realize that God knows and cares about your needs. Matthew 6, verse 8, For your Father knows the things you have need of before you even ask Him. So God cares about you. Number five, God cast all your cares on him. In 1 Peter chapter 5, it says, casting our care upon him, knowing that he cares for you. So what it is, worry is you carrying something that God doesn't want you to carry. You're carrying a burden. You're carrying a weight. You're carrying a stress. You're carrying a pressure that God doesn't want you to carry. So what do you do with it? You push it over onto God. Remember, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary, heavy laden. Come and take my yoke upon me, you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. For there you will find rest for your souls. So Jesus wants to carry the weight for you. Number six, pray about it with thanksgiving until the peace comes. So the answer that Paul gives in Philippians about where he says, don't worry about anything, but pray about it. Everything you need, pray about it, always giving thanks and the peace which is, is beyond comprehension, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I've found that if I'll just spend time in prayer, praying about the thing, and I, not just one little shot, but I pray until the peace comes, you'll find that God takes the weight off of you. Number seven, trust in the Lord. So here's another way we don't worry, is we trust God knows what he's doing. Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8 says, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That means don't try to figure your way out of the situation. Trust the Lord. Father knows best, right? Don't be a wise guy, it goes on to say. It says, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So here God says, lacking of trust is actually lead you into evil. So trust God. God's got it figured out. He's promised to take care of you. He is a good father. Now here's another one I've really learned. And that's number eight, which is to take no thought, all right? So the thing is, Matthew 6, 34, Jesus said, take therefore no thought for the morrow. So the way worries come, they come in the form of thoughts. Remember I told you, what about this? What about that? How are we going to make it? Oh my gosh, the terrible things are going to happen to me. And so Jesus said, don't take that thought. So here's how I look at it. It's like somebody, you're going to a dinner party and someone's going around with a trail, a, a tray of hors d'oeuvres, right? And they walk up to you and there's this all these chocolates on the tray and they say, would you like one? And you say, no, thank you. I'm not going to take one, right? Well, the devil goes around with a tra tray of negative, scary thoughts, condemning thoughts, guilt thoughts, shame thoughts, uh, you know, the future's terrible thoughts. And he comes around and he wants you to take one of those things. He wants you to take a bite out of those thoughts. Here's what you have to do. You have to say, no, thank you. Uh, Jesus said, take no thought. So I'm not taking any of these thoughts. Second Corinthians 10, 5 says that we're to cast down thoughts and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. Number nine, 
What you got to do is not enough to cast the thought down. You got to replace the worry thoughts with praise and thanksgiving that the Lord is taking care of your problem. So when the worry thought comes, you should say, thank you, devil, for reminding me just to praise the Lord that he is a good provider. He's going to take care of me. He's already got the victory in mind. He knows how to get me out of every temptation and every situation. And I choose now to replace the negative thoughts with the positive because I just give praise to God and I'm going to set my mind on things above and not on things that are on the earth. And then Paul in 1 Thessalonians says this, and by the way, in Philippians 2, he says, rejoice. So if you start rejoicing, and that's going to begin to replace the worry. And then lastly, the 10th thing that you do with worry is you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that God's going to take care of the thing. So don't go out and try to fix your situation. Just follow, you know, I'm not saying don't take responsibility. Don't try any doors. Don't sit there and do nothing. But I am saying that you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the promise is that God's going to take care of all those needs. Well, let me pray for you in closing. Father, I thank you for everyone that's watching this. And we determine to follow the 11th commandment, thou shalt not worry. God, I pray and we just cast down those worries, those fears, those doubts about the future right now in the name of Jesus. We're going to live in the now. We're going to rejoice in the Lord. We're going to praise you. We're going to cast our cares on you today, right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. God bless you. And you know, I want you to know that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.